Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Today, new video with a new rag that allowed you to create great techno and stab. So let me show you how it sounds. So first we have this drum loop. And I'm gonna play the rack on top of it. I have different presets, so I'm just gonna go over. So that gives you an idea. I create a rack with Live 11, but I've made a live 10 version. As usual, the rack is available for free. The link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe before to grab it. And so here is the rack, and here you have the different variation. Obviously, you which are the different presets you just heard. So first, I'm going to explain you a little bit what does each macro, how it affects the sound, and then we will recreate the rack from scratch and give you some tips along the way how you can make it your own and experiment with. So that's the rack. So you have the tone, which is basically going to change the wave table position. It's just going to give you different usually at 100% it's more like edgy and gritty and it's more round and and softer around 0% then the whole idea of the of the stab is based on FM so you have the FM amount that's what gives this aggressive sound and you can control the FM tune so Just some FM parameters to get different tone and character. You have the GK as well here, which is gonna make you sound longer or shorter. Very short at zero. And a bit more like a horn or sustain the more you go. Then you have a high pass filter. So here what's gonna do, it's gonna almost act like a band pass filter. It's gonna filter your sound. This usually work well with the delay here. Just get this bandpass filter type of sound a bit delayed and all right then you have stereo so because i've used unison for this rack the sound the signal is pretty stereo but if you want something more mono you have this macro here because sometimes you don't want the sound to be on all over the spectrum sometimes you want to be more focused so that's what allowed you anyway after you have gla and reverb which gonna allow you to give back the stereo if you need speaking of delay it's just the classic ping pong delay and the reverb delay amount this i've put it because this way if you want to put your own delay and reverb you can just bypass them like this all right so let's recreate the rack from scratch we're gonna use wavetable and first things we're gonna group and i'm just gonna rename and recolor the macro as it was in the original all right so then before to start we're gonna just put our scent in mono and like i said it's a fm style of scent tab so we're gonna go here and select fm and we can already map our fm amount macro and the tune here so here there is one thing i've done i found that the tune if i go positively it's creating this very high pitched sound and we want something more like in the low mid let's say something a little bit more beefy and fat so that's why you're gonna go to map and the maximum effect tune you're gonna put to zero then you can go negatively we can already apply some <laughs> fm so here the great thing is you can choose basically any wavetable you want uh, for this rack i've been to retro and choose the sweep saw one but it worked well with the sweep saw two i like the noise brown noise as well and then we're gonna map the position to the turn so all right so because it's a stab effect you want to have the volume straight full on at the maximum from the beginning so you want something with amp envelope with no attack and the sustain at the maximum so you start the sound with straight away full on maximum volume decay doesn't really matter then and then really you can adjust i put 200 milliseconds to don't have something too sharp but you can have something a bit sharper you know when you release it or even something a bit longer just gonna put this one here to have a bit more harmonics so now to get this stab and edgy sound what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a low pass filter that we're gonna bring down to have a very muffled sound but this filter we're gonna open it with a very sharp envelope so this way your filter is gonna open fast and you're gonna have something edgy sharp that's got a bit more bite and it's a bit more aggressive than normal so 
bring down your filter, let's say around 80 hertz, 60 hertz. You keep the 20 dv. I use the Moog Pro DG filter style just because the drive is nice, but I'll come back to this later. So we want to modulate this filter. We're gonna click on frequency and then go to matrix. So this way filter appear here and we're gonna modulate with envelope two. So we're gonna modulate it around 75%. We want something quite aggressive. And like I said, I want a very fast and sharp envelope. So zero attack, I need to bring down the sustain and then the decay around 375. But here I'm gonna go to slope and you see this slope here you can make it a bit rounder or a bit like tighter. And, it, and if you stay around this value, it's gonna make it a bit more. Tighter. Now it's great, but a good way to add a bit more bite is to play with the resonance and the drive. So you can crank up this. You don't want this acid resonance effect, but you want to crank up the resonance to accentuate the filter movement. And you can add a bit more drive as well to beef things up. Now we can see we are a bit loud in volume. We can reduce and around minus 18. Now I feel it's missing some transient and great way to add transient when you have a scent is to use an envelope to modulate the pitch and we're gonna use very very sharp and small envelope to modulate a lot of the pitch which is gonna create this click and you're gonna see it. So I'm gonna go to matrix and I'm gonna modulate the pitch with envelope 3 by 36 semitone which is 3 octave. <coughs> So now it sounds horrible, but the idea is again to have a very sharp envelope. So very something very small, so around like 15 milliseconds maybe. And now you have this click which adds transient to your sound. And finally, we're gonna add some unison just to make the sound super stereo. Sometimes it's nice to have the sound stereo. So I'm just gonna use the shimmer with only two voice and the amount at 20%. So you get the stereo of the unison, but you don't get this detune effect. We don't really want the detune effect. So that's why we only have two voice and a small amount, but we still get this nice stereo effect. Now last macro before to jump into the effect processing is the GK. For that, you need to go to envelope two and I basically map the sustain to the GK. So you might wonder why I didn't rename here the sustain, the macro, because DK it's easier to understand that is the length of the sound. And that's basically what it does. It kind of open a bit more the, the filter like it like it was with a GK. So that's why I call it like this. It's easier to understand than with sustain. Now you also have this high pass filter macro, which I basically map the second filter to this macro. So I'm gonna map the toggle on off and the filter. All right, so I'm just gonna go to map here. I'm gonna activate from one. So when it's at the minimum, the high pass filter is deactivated. And the frequency, I don't need to go too much like 500 Hertz basically. It's just to kind of cut the main fundamental frequency or a bit of the low frequency to kind of act as the band pass. I don't want to have a very high filtered sound. I just want to be able to add character. So that's why I'm gonna as well adjust the resonance to 45%. And this way you will see you're gonna get kind of a high pass filter. So what you can do is as well modulate the high pass filter with the envelope, but this way we're gonna modulate a little bit less. And this way you can get a kind of band pass type of sound. Now we can control the stereo. We're gonna go to utility, use utility, and we're gonna map the width just to the stereo. We're gonna remove the bass mono. So here again, some mapping because I don't want it to be too mono. So I'm gonna put 30% and I don't wanna go over 100% like the normal signal. 30 is mono and then 100% is very stereo. But if you go a bit like around 50%, you get something like not too mono, but not too stereo neither. All right, so now it's all about processing and making things a bit louder, a bit slappier. So there is no special recipe. There is a million way to do it. I'm just gonna show you the way I did for this rack. Yeah, first I've used overdrive. So mainly to make it a bit louder, but also to make it a bit more aggressive, but I don't want a too pronounced effect. I just want a subtle effect. First, I'm gonna put like almost all the spectrum here and just move a little bit like this too. And like I said, I want something subtle. So I'm gonna bring the drive around 30%. Then I want distortion a bit more in the mid high. So I'm gonna just crank up the tone a little bit as well. Around 60%, bring down the dynamics. And then I'm gonna adjust the driveway to have something a bit more subtle. So that add a bit of grid. Now we want to add a bit of bytes and I'm gonna use saturator and I'm gonna use medium curve. It's usually great to make things louder. And again, I'm gonna reduce the effect here around 60%. 
All right, then we're gonna use the multiband dynamic, but we're not gonna use, we're not gonna do multiband compression. We're gonna do more like multiband EQ. So here I'm gonna set my band, the low at 217 and then the high at one kilohertz. And we're not gonna touch the compression at all. I'm gonna leave it like this. And I'm just gonna use the output to kind of do some multiband EQ to kind of rebalance the signal. And I'm gonna reduce the high and the mid. Maybe reduce the output as well. Now we can apply an EQ to really kind of give a bit of character. And I'm gonna use first a low cut where we're gonna straight away add a bit of resonance to the low cut. And this is the same idea with the second filter of the wavetable. It just worked well, don't ask me why. And then we can boost again one kilo, like at least seven dB. Boost again three kilo, a bit more gentle here, like three dB. And finally, our share from 5 kilohertz and again 2, 3 dB of gain. Now to compensate this gain, we're going to just reduce a little, put minus 5 dB. All right, that's give a nice color to the sound. Now we can resaturate a little bit everything. So again, I'm going to use saturator, but this time I'm going to use soft sign and I'm going to activate the DC soft clip. And I don't even need to add some drive, it's already add some loudness. Maybe reduce the output just to have a bit more space for the other effect later on. Now I've used Redux. Actually, it's really nice to use Redux on a small amount just to add again a kind of a click, a kind of um, transient to the sound. And you're gonna see what I mean. If I reduce the rate, You can hear it's adding this resonance sound, which can sound a bit annoying, but if you reduce the dry wet amount, I feel it adds a bit of bite to the sound and I feel it's a small detail that can really make a difference. All right, so finally I'm gonna add some delay and reverb. So the delay, I just used the classic Ableton uh, ping pong delay. I've just put in one, three. So you get this tuggadun tuggadun effect. And I filter it a little as well. I maybe reduce the feedback, you don't want something too long. And then the dry weight you can just apply to the rack. Then we're gonna use our hybrid reverse and I just wanna use the convolution. It was just to add me color and character to the sound. This you can really experiment with. And I'm just gonna go to real place and choose Noira copies room. Reduce the decay because it's way too long. Map the dry wet amount to reverb. Just gonna reduce, I'm just gonna remove the delay. Put back the stereo and then you can bit more stereo and you can EQ as well same way boost like around one kilo our shelf all right and we have pretty much our sound so now i have a final extra process which is just for loudness just to make things very big fat in your face we're gonna use ableton drum bus which is really nice for that i'm gonna put in hard mode it's supposed to add a bit of flow but because we filter heavily hear it don't hear it much and uh, we're gonna activate the compressor quite savage but we're gonna go even with crunch a bit more savage and crank it up to really add some extra harmonics and loudness so that start to be very loud just reduce the damping because obviously it's gonna have some extra harmonic and frequency in the high and damping is gonna kind of apply a low pass filter which is gonna reduce this just allow you to get rid of a little bit of this annoying frequency that crunch added and then we're gonna use transient negatively transient is gonna act like a, a gate so basically what's happening is gonna reduce the tail of your sound so here we have a reverb with quite a long tail so it's gonna reduce the tail of the reverb which is great because we can have the feeling of a large room with a large reverb with a long tail but then we don't have this long tail which is annoying we can mess your mix because the transient is gonna reduce this tail volume <laughs> So then finally, last process, we're gonna use utility that we're gonna put the bass in mono. And yeah, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can grab the rag for free, the link in the description. And see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.